conceptual sometimes. People talk about it. All of the elements. Hello, everybody. Dr. McCall is dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is having a great week so far. We're in the midway point. Uh, for those of you who keep track of all of that type stuff, we are at a point where we've had enough of the week to kind of gauge how things are going and we still uh, have uh, enough time to make some changes to end up getting the week to be what we want it to be. Remember, life is a journey. It's about taking steps. And in this journey, you're on this constant continuum, which is this tension uh, of progress, which you are moving forward and sometimes moving backward. It is a process for everybody. Always remember, nobody gets through life on this continuum where they don't have some time that they move backwards. You take some steps forward and you move back. As you develop confidence, as you develop a keener sense of where you're going, as you develop a more vivid understanding of your purpose, as you decide and move forward and become more committed, you take far more steps forward than you take backwards. But you will have moments where life will push you back. It is a part of the process. It is a part of the journey. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give in. Don't surrender. Remember our motto, no surrender, no retreat. Hey, Philip. Uh, it's always good to see you. Hello, Deanna. I haven't uh, seen you in a minute. Welcome, everybody. Look, I want to encourage you. Before I forget, uh, those of you who have been keeping up with what's going on with the Your Best Life 30-Day Challenge, which we're kicking off in March, those of you who have already enrolled, you should have received emails uh, uh, getting you to get back with me with your availability so we can set up your initial interview and get, get ready so we kick this off at the beginning of March. Uh, get back at me. I once again want to congratulate Erica Tolliver, who won the lottery and won a uh, platinum package, which is a 52-week, 52-session uh, package where she'll be working with me for the next year. Uh, congratulations on that. I'm going to be creating ways to do this on a monthly basis where I'll be giving away one platinum package a month. Uh, I just want to really uh, do my part of uh, inviting people in many times, people who can't afford to work with me and giving them opportunities this month it all came through the 30-day challenge throughout march i'm going to be coming up with a way that we're going to do it again uh at the end of march so be ready for that and i'm going to tell you how you can do it as soon as we get it together but i want to welcome now finally uh I, we had a enrollment deadline the people who enrolled on the deadline were entered into the lottery but I did, while I didn't extend the deadline for the lottery, I did extend the enrollment deadline until noon today. If you still want to take part of that, that's four sessions uh, over the 30-day period. Uh, those sessions are valued at $350 a piece. That's a personal plan, a free disc assessment. If you want to still enroll, that's only $99.95. I want to thank the people who have already come on board and said they're committed to making this one change. I It all actually started with me saying there was something that I'm going to work on over the next 30 days. It was me looking at who, where I'm at and where I want to go next and needing to know what I need to change about where I'm at now to be able to get to where I want to go. And that is... Um, how it all got started and I decided to invite some people along for the uh, for the journey. That's 25 uh, people that I invited along. Uh, a lot of more people said they wanted it, but not everybody finished the enrollment process. So there's still room and time for you. You have until noon today, Central Standard Time, to actually get that together and enroll. Uh, the information is in the description box. Uh, we're going to stop enrollment at noon. That means you have to actually be enrolled and paid your enrollment fee. And then we'll get you set up, get start uh, the interview, get your uh, plan set up. And then I'm going to walk you through the 30-day process of building a positive habit that will lead to success moving forward. Uh, this is how you do it. Success leaves clues. Success is the result of positive, functional, and productive habits. It's that simple. So on that note, we're going to 
get ready to move forward. I'm not going to take too much more of your time, but I want to talk to you this morning about uh, the importance of guarding and monitoring your self-talk. Um, there is a biblical scripture that I absolutely love, comes out of the book of Job. And whether you uh, ascribe to Christianity, whether you ascribe to Judaism, whether you ascribe to Islam or any other things that are, that are attached to uh, Abrahamic covenants or anything like that is irrelevant. Because what I can tell you is men who don't even believe in God have used these scriptures to establish something. What I can also tell you is the principles that are engulfed in what I'm sharing with you here have now been proven scientifically. So what I'm giving you is God's way of letting you know how to establish things in your lives. And the simple, the simple version of the scripture says, you shall declare a thing and it shall be established for you. When you make declarations verbally, you literally establish a reality. So your reality does not begin when you see it manifested. It begins at the point of your declaration. It starts actually at the point of the thought that leads to the declaration. So you need to monitor your thinking that's why, again, you see another scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Why? Because when a man thinks in his heart, or what we would now call the subconscious, the most powerful force in our individual existence, the thing that uh, literally uh, dictates and uh, generates 96% of our behavior, our subconscious mind is our heart. When you look at it and you break it down and you understand what is being meant, because you see mind and heart always used uh in, in parallel guard your hearts and minds well your heart is your subconscious it controls 96 percent of your behavior your mind noose in, in 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 ancient greek uh cardia in greek or lev in, in 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 hebrew is the heart the center that's cardia it's the center of the soul it's the center it's the beginning of all things and it is 96 percent of your behavior but the noose is the mind in Greek, and that is uh, three to four percent of your behavior, and it's your consciousness. Now, what we find out is that our consciousness can dictate priority. Our consciousness can establish desire. Our consciousness, uh, our consciousness can establish certain things, but it is literally our subconscious that carries it out. Whatever you expose your subconscious to the most is what you're going to produce because your subconscious is what's going to control your thoughts. You have about 70,000 thoughts that travel through your subconscious every day. About 50,000 to 55,000 of those are going to be the same thoughts that travel through yesterday, but it's going to be a result of what you're feeding your subconscious. What are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you speaking? Everything you hear and see is becoming a part of what's dictating your thought processes. If you're exposed to a bunch of negative ideas, negative thoughts, negative realities, your thoughts are going to be negative and you're going to produce more negativity. If you want to change it, you've got to move away from thinking negative, speaking negative. And one of the most powerful ways that you speak negative is through your self-talk. The most positive way you speak positive. The most powerful way you speak positive is through your self-talk. Uh, it was once said that the human brain is the most powerful supercomputer on the planet. And if you can understand how, how much it processes in just a second, it has the ability to process more than 400, bits of billion, 400 bit, billion bits of information per second. That's the human brain. Now, it's the most powerful supercomputer on the planet. But guess what, what they said after they said that? They said, and your self-talk is the program that it will run. What are you saying about yourself? So it doesn't matter that your brain can process 400 billion bits of information per second. It matters what information you're uploading into that computer that's going to determine how it works. The processor is just the processor. It's the program and the software that you upload on your computer that's going to determine the capacity of the computer and how well the computer performs. Many of you have uploaded Trojan, where malware, uh, and, and, and all other types of things where not only are you speaking negatively yourself, you've uploaded the negative thoughts, in other words, malware and spyware, from somebody else's thoughts and ideas about you up into your psyche, through your self-talk. You're speaking negatively about yourself and your situations, and God says you shall declare a thing. So when you speak it, you establish it. That's science. Now, we know that for a fact. You keep talking about it, you manifest it. Why? Because when you talk about it, 
nothing is more important to your brain in prioritizing what's important to you than what you speak. It tells the brain, I like this, I don't like this. I expect this, I don't expect this. This is important to me. Why? And then you, it, 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 it does it in a lot of different ways, but the thing you talk about the most is the thing that is gonna give the most gravity to. So if you're talking about your, 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 your crappy relationship all the time, it's gonna be more crappy. Why? Because you've already labeled it crappy and you gave it a priority. So what happens? The brain says relationship with whoever it is, crappy. Now I'm going to find everything about that relationship that's crappy. So it stops looking for the good because it's looking for crappy. Why? Because that's what you gave it. You tagged the relationship as crappy. So what does the brain do? The brain looks for all the crappy stuff in the relationship. That funnels through a filter we know as the reticular activating system. The reticular activating system is what keeps you from losing your mind. How? Because the conscious mind can only process 2,000 bits of information per second. And like we already said, the brain and the subconscious can process 400 billion bits of information. So all of that stuff that's flowing around in the subconscious that it picks up from every piece of stimuli out there, visual, taste, smell, hearing, in other sensories that you may not even be aware of, it's picking it up and it's storing it and it's categorizing it all in the mind in seconds. And you didn't even see it, but it saw it. Why? The subconscious doesn't miss anything. Your conscious mind is what's bringing awareness to the things you want it to. So you see the line that you want to read on the sign. You see the, uh, the, 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 the car you want to see, but it's a billion other cars out there that your subconscious didn't miss. It saw every last one of them. Now what it has to do is determine what's important to you. So that's the, the, the reticular activating system is why you can go to a car lot to go shopping. And you have your idea, you have your mind on one car, get that, you see a new car that they just come out with, or you see a new color, whatever, and you hadn't really uh, seen it before, and you get real excited about it, and you buy the car. When you drive up the lot, or you, even if you don't buy the car, but now you know the car exists and you want it. Now when you drive off that lot, all of a sudden you start to see it everywhere. Did the car just appear? No, it wasn't important to you before, either because you hadn't given any consideration or you had never seen it. And now that you've given it importance, it's going to pop up everywhere. You're going to see the commercials for it. You're going to see it in multiple colors. You're going to see people you didn't know had one, has one, and all of that stuff like that. That's what the reticular activating system does. It takes what you say in many different ways or is important to you, and it highlights it. It searches for it. So when you start talking negative about your life, it starts to find why you're right. See, when you ask yourself the question, why will I fail at business? Or why is it that I'm likely to fail at business? The truth is there are some reasons that people fail at business. But the truth also is there are some reasons that people succeed against the odds that are out there. But what happens when you say, why is it that I will likely fail? You're, or I'm going to fail at this. Your brain is not going to look for the reasons why you won't fail. It's going to go find the reasons you will fail, and it will constantly put it in front of you. That's why when you're having a debate with someone about something, and all of a sudden you're scrolling down your timeline, the thing that validates your point shows up because you made it important. It, it's been there. You scroll past it, I don't know how many times, until it had meaning to you, and all of a sudden it pops out and it sticks out. And that same person is doing the same thing on their scroll, finding something that makes their point. On the internet, there's a point, there's, there's plenty of information to cover every point there is, whether it's right or wrong, it's out there. What you've got to do is program your brain through your self-talk to look for the things that are going to magnify the positive in your life, give you a state of gratitude because it's magnifying the positive, it's teaching you to focus on the positive, but it's also going to teach you how to speak into your life. You shall declare a thing and it shall be established. You shall declare a thing. What you speak has power. What you speak about your life has immense power. You're uploading the ideas into your life into your mind, you're manifesting maybe months, years 
into your future by what you're speaking today. I'm not saying that you act like or pretend that certain things aren't happening in your life. I'm not saying that you don't give it the, 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 the necessary attention to address it. I'm saying that how you address it is immensely important. When you give it power, this is going to do this to me. This is going to happen to me. Oh, my God. When you start acting in fear, you give that thing that you are fearing power in your life to act in your life and to be a force in your life. When you look at it and say, it shall not destroy me. It shall not be the end. This is not the end of the situation. When you speak, I shall win. When you speak, I will overcome. When you speak, I have the, the, the answers and the solutions moving to me and towards me. When you speak, in a way of power, and you refuse to accept defeat as a possibility, your mind has no option but to go find the solution. Listen to me. Did you hear what I'm saying? When you refuse to accept the situation as the end of the story. See, I'm not telling you to be in denial. I'm not telling you to pretend that whatever it is you're dealing with that you're not going through. What I'm telling you is you got a choice to look at it as a challenge or a problem. When you look at it as a problem, it looks bigger than you and you have no true expectation of being able to overcome it. You are hoping somebody else might fix it. But when you look at it as a challenge, you know automatically that because it's in front of you, you are already built for it. And so you are going to make up in your mind that you're going to go out and you're going to come to the answer. The beautiful thing about being connected to the mind of God is that the answer is always on the way. There's no problem, no situation, no challenge that shakes or, 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 or disturbs or puts to work the mind of God. God, in, 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 in whatever way you want to call God, God, but that supreme being of the universe. That is in every part of your cellular makeup. That means that you have the knowledge of God, not only around you, in everything around you, but in you. You have the power of God, not only around you, but in you. And when you start to understand that there's absolutely no challenge that you're going to face that you're not built for, that the answer does not exist for. If it's there, there's an answer to it. If it's a challenge, there is the ability to overcome it. But what are you speaking? How are you thinking in your heart? And then if you say, okay, then, okay, let's, let's, let's work this out. Look at it again. It says that you shall declare a thing and it shall it shall be established. Then it tells you as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Here's another part when you want to figure out, well, how can I control my self-talk? See, what people want to do is think from a conscious perspective. See, I can consciously guard my self-talk when I'm consciously thinking about it, but what we know now is the conscious is very limited in controlling behavior. 96% of your behavior is controlled. Wow by your subconscious. So you can't consciously keep your mind on guarding your self-talk. That's where a lot of people a lot of people miss and that's where the problem starts. Yeah, when I'm thinking about it, I won't talk negative about myself. When I when it crosses my mind, I'll catch myself. But how many times are words coming out before you even consciously think about it because it's a natural part of your subconscious makeup? Well then how do I sit up and change my self-talk? Well there's another verse that I like that's again scientifically black in psychology and sociology and it says out of the abundance of the heart. Now remember the heart, we're not talking about the physiological heart, we're talking about the center of the soul, the subconscious. Out of the abundance of the subconscious, the mouth speaks. What are you feeding your subconscious that will back up positive self-talk? What do you feed? Are you listening to negativity more than positivity? And here's the thing, negative, negativity weighs more than positivity. So in other words, there's a study that shows for every negative word you speak about yourself, you got to speak 17 positive things that counter that before you balance it. Not before you move up into a positive, before you bring it even. How many people are you allowing to speak negatively, negativity into your life without checking it and without ending it and without distancing yourself? How many times are you saying something and it, it, it doesn't align with what you desire for your life? Then you've got to start feeding yourself positively on purpose. 
What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you watching? Out of the abundance of the heart, the subconscious, the mouth speaks. And what you declare, <laughs> you establish. I'm telling you, there's literally a methodical approach to this. It's not happenstance. It's not I'm going to throw it up in the air and hope God catches it. It's not I'm going to throw it up in the air and hope it uh, up against the wall and hope it sticks. It's that I'm going to methodically get myself out of thinking negatively. I'm going to methodically get myself out of speaking negatively. I'm going to methodically sit up and feed my mind, my heart, something that will produce the type of talk about my life that will produce the results I want. Now, here's the beauty of it. See, it's not magic. Now, when you talk about it, it seems magic. And, and that's what a lot of people of faith or who claim to be people of faith miss it. Because it says you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. They think that's magic. I'm just going to declare it. No, when you declare something, you send a signal to the brain. And the brain says, this is what we are. This is who we are. This is what we do. And then there are actions that follow the declaration and the establishment of something that ends up producing the result. In other words, your actions are going to align with what you're thinking and speaking. And your actions are going to produce a reality. And you cannot get away from it no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you talk, no matter how much you do. You're going to have to align yourself with your destiny. You're going to have to have a clear vision of what your destiny is. And you're going to have to sometimes speak what your destiny is above speaking what your situation is. Hmm. Y'all didn't even hear that. Sometimes you're going to have to call things that are not as though they were. Why? Because when you declare a thing, you establish it. You have the ability to transcend the moment by speaking what's beyond it. Did you get that? You have an ability to transcend this momentary suffering, affliction, pain, setback, hardship by declaring what's beyond it. Whatever it is that you desire for your life is on the other side of pain and fear. And you can get so caught up in the pain and fear that you lose sight of what's on the other side. But when you start to declare what's on the other side while you're still going through it, it first of all starts to make sense. Second of all, it becomes easier to endure. Third of all, you set a path and a blaze that nobody can put out. Look, I'm gonna check out of here. I want you to understand something. You're gonna have people who don't like you. You're going to have people who will make it their business, literally a career of reminding you of who you used to be. You're going to have people who have become experts at telling you why you can't do something. What you're going to have to do is make up in your mind that you were designed for greatness, that you were designed to be exceptional and phenomenal that there's a place in this world set aside for you to do only what you can do. And then you're going to have to make up in your mind that no matter what you face, you're going the distance, that you're not going to be deterred, denied, or set aside by the circumstances of life, that you're not going to be dismissed by the opinions of minimal-minded people, that you are not going to be shaken up and become frenetic and unglued because things aren't going your way, that you're going to step out in your design and walk in your purpose and fulfill your destiny. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. I challenge you. I challenge you. I say it all the time. I wake up every day, and the first thing I do is I say, thank you. I'm grateful. Why? Because if I'm breathing, I'm still in the fight. If I'm still here, there's still something for me to give this world. There's still some way that I can sketch another line in my legacy. I'm thankful to wake up and look next to me and see my wife and know with that responsibility of being a husband, also comes an opportunity for greatness. And I say thank you. 
I've started with gratitude and then I establish that I'm going to go out and I'm going to take what I have today and I'm going to give everything I have. I'm going to live my life on full because if today is my last day, I got to die on E. That's the challenge that I'm giving you. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Hopefully I live another 50 years. But if I don't make it past today, I got to give all that I have because I can't die with all this inside of me. Give everything you have to being the best that you can be. Yes, it's, you're going to go to bed with some things that you still need to work on. Wake up and work on them tomorrow. But don't sit around in your current state and situation and accept it as the best you have. There's so much inside of you. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. For those, don't forget, you can still enroll in that 30-day uh, uh, challenge uh, until noon. The information is in there in the description box. Again, I implore you, live your life on full. Because what you should be living for is to live a life that outlives you. And you do that by building a, de a legacy. Something that'll speak for you long after you're gone, speak of you long after you're gone. Let the world know that you were here and that you came here and you had an impact on this world. That's why you're here. You're not here to just exist. You're not here just to survive. You're not here just to coast along and meander through the maze of mediocrity. You're here to leave your imprint on this world. Don't let anybody else tell you anything different. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day, and I'll be checking back in with you later. Here I come, ready or not. Frank Ocean made this record hot. From the conceptual perspective, people talk Real about talk, it. Real talk, I ain't throwing shots. Careful who you